Hi, my name is James Holroyd from Pocket Survey Cloud Surveying Software. Welcome to this short training session. I'm going to show you how the plan maintenance software works and how to create your surveying reports quickly and easily. This app is similar to our housing stock condition survey, but is more suitable for commercial buildings, especially if you want to collect fabric, mechanical and electrical element data. It should be about 20 minutes long. If you're not already a PS Cloud user, contact us to get your low cost trial where you can get your first month subscription at a reduced price. And if you don't like the software after your initial month, there's no obligation to continue with your subscription. The first thing to mention about the app is that it's designed for mobile devices, but also works great on desktop computers. There's only one interface to learn, which looks the same on all devices. So you can use it on Apple or Android, tablets and phones, as well as desktop computers such as Windows, Mac and Chrome. With our uncluttered and easy to use interface, you can speed up your workflow tremendously and produce your surveying reports immediately after your site inspections. All our cloud-based apps look similar and have some common features. So before we create a complete report from scratch, I'll briefly explain the common features running across all our PS Cloud apps. The button at the bottom left accesses all your reports, showing your building reports organized by town. At the top left, the main menu gives you access to valuable features such as the jobs calendar, Location maps, jobs progress, users, client information, app setup features, help and support, and even the ability to export your data to spreadsheets. Pocket Survey has a unique feature that allows you to customize the menus and report structure within the app setup. We'll come back to that later on. So let's look at a planned maintenance survey I've already done to give you an overview of what comes out at the end. On the buildings list, I tap on a building and you'll see the front page photo and inspection status. And then below that, you've got some buttons. We can add an item. We can copy the building information. There's a button to create the PDF report and want to open the created PDF reports. If we scroll down, you'll see which client this report belongs to. That is if you have multiple clients. You can turn off the clients feature in the app setup if you don't want to use it. The inspection details section shows the inspector, inspection date, inspection time, the type of inspection, followed by some free format descriptive notes. The building details section shows more information about the building. There's an optional section to capture general building information, such as building construction and gross internal area. Of course, the most essential part of the report is the building items section. You will see all the building items inspected, showing the latest items inspected at the top. However, this order can easily be changed to suit your own needs. If you tap the view button, you can see the whole list for the building. You can add more building items using the add button. Towards the end, you've got general building images such as floor plans, certificates, and any image you want to add to your report. If you want to make changes to the inspection, select the edit button. Let's scroll back to the top of the building record. To create your PDF report, choose the Create PDF Report button, and when the report is ready, select the Open PDF Report button. Let's look at a typical report in more detail. The front page is branded with your logo and your address. Then you've got your front photo of the building, plus an optional trade logo. Then you get an automatic table of contents, which is all hyperlinked, so you can jump to the different sections quickly. The report contains quite a lot of detailed information, all created at the click of a button. This includes various cost forecasts. Some sections are optional and can be turned off in the app setup. Then you've got an introduction page. Now all these phrases can be edited within the app, but we'll come to that later in the app setup. The overview section of the report shows inspection details, optional client details, building details, and a summary of the condition of the inspected items in the building. If you've enabled the building information feature, you can capture a lot of general information about the building. All of this is configurable in the app setup. Then you have a series of sections showing cost forecasts for the building. There's a 5-year forecast, a 30-year forecast, a condition forecast and an optional works forecast. There's a section highlighting all the building elements in poor condition. Then for each building element and relevant areas in the building, we show detailed information. This information covers item and location, description and free format notes, color coded condition status. The capital replacement costs and replacement plan details are shown to the right. You can have up to four photos for each item. If you've chosen the works add-on feature, remedial work details will be listed below the photos. Each building item is shown in a similar format. If you've captured equipment information such as manufacturer, make, model and serial number, it will also be shown on the report. Your clients will love the report format. Let's scroll towards the end. You've got your disclaimer and limitations section. Bear in mind that all these phrases in your report can be set up within the app to customize it to your needs. 
The quality assurance statement will show the inspector's signature and if you've chosen to use quality checkers, their details as well. At the end you have your four plans and any additional building images you've included in your report. If you want to save your PDF report, tap the download button to save it to your storage area. Let's close the PDF report and get back to the app. We can return to the buildings list by tapping the buildings icon at the bottom left. So let's start a new plan maintenance survey to see how easy it is. Tap the add button at the bottom right of the buildings list screen. You'll see a scrollable form with several fields to fill in. Most of these will be user configurable menus to speed up data entry. First, you can choose a client or if you want to add a new one. Let's add a new client organization. Type my client and tap use. Then you can either add a client contact name or pick an existing one. You can store other information about your client, which is helpful if you want to contact your clients on site. And so you have a little client database. And we can choose the inspector. You can have different classes of inspectors, like more powerful administrators. You can also have a client login where a client can access their reports via a client portal. Choose an inspection date. And an inspection time and then add some inspection notes if you want to. The inspection status menu helps you track the workflow of your reports. We use a color coded pipeline approach where you go from schedule through to completed work. Remember, you can add this information on site or do it in the office if you prefer. Now let's add some building details. You have a place to add a building reference or you can use a report reference instead. Adding addresses is easy since Google will search for the address if you start typing it in. You can import addresses in bulk using the import feature within the app. The building name is used to identify different buildings at the same address. We also have building type and an optional short description of the building. It's a good idea to allocate the report to a town, especially if you work nationwide. Enter other building details as required. Your reports will look much better with photos and Pocket Survey makes this easy for you. So let's take a building photo. I'm going to choose one that I've already taken because I'm using a desktop computer, but you would snap this on site directly from your camera. That's the photo added to the front page of your report. You use a similar approach when taking building item photos. Then choose save. You'll notice it's prompting us to choose which inspection type to use since it's a mandatory field. Choose an appropriate inspection type. Then save to add your report to the buildings list. Now we've set up the first part of the report. We can now inspect the items in the building and enter information into the survey. So we'll tap into the building record to view it and you'll see the information we've entered so far. We tap the add item button to load the scrollable data entry form to assess a building item. You should establish a location first. So you should choose a particular floor or external area. And then optionally, you can specify a room or area if required. You can tailor the list of locations to suit your needs in the app setup. We'll leave location two blank for now. Then you choose from the group of building elements. A quick note here, we group building elements into sections, individual items and descriptions to organize data entry on site. Choose the roofing section. Next, we need to choose the building element being inspected, followed by a description from the menu list and any optional freeform comments. We can choose a condition rating. Note that you can use your own condition ratings if you need to. You'll have a place to enter an optional installed date. If we choose anything other than good, we get a list of defects to choose from. Let's pick some defects from the list already in the standard app. You can add your own specific defects in the app setup as well. You can add additional notes if you need to. Because this is a planned maintenance survey, the app will pick up elemental costs from a schedule of rates. You can set up your own schedule of rates in the app setup. You will see the app has picked up the unit of measure and unit cost. You have to specify the quantity and the app will calculate the total cost. You should change the remaining life according to what you see on site and the replacement year will be automatically calculated. Let's now take a photo. The app will automatically launch the camera on your mobile device. However, I'll pick one from my computer because I'm demonstrating the app on a desktop. You can take more photos in a similar way. You can take up to four photos per building item. So that's one building item done. Now choose save. A quick note here. When you inspect other items, the PS Cloud software remembers some previous selections to speed up your data entry. For mechanical and electrical items, you can also capture additional equipment information such as manufacturer, make, model, and serial number. Furthermore, for SFG20, you can define endless custom attributes to fit in with IBM Maximo, Concept Evolution, and MRI software systems. Once you've inspected all the items in your building, you can now create your PDF report. You tap into the building record and choose the more prominent Create Report button. 
you'll be prompted to confirm. It takes about 30 seconds while the software generates the report in the background. You can continue to work on other inspections while you are waiting. The open report button will appear when your report is ready. So far we've covered the essential aspects of creating a planned maintenance survey report. As you've seen, it's quick and easy to do and produces a fantastic client report. But there's lots more to the software. For example, if your client wants a costing list of remedial works, you can use our costing works add-on feature. I'm going to demonstrate that to you now. So let's tap to open the building record. Then, if we scroll down to the building items we've already inspected, we can choose the building item we want to add remedial works to. A quick note here, if we tap the pencil icon, we can edit the information in a form. However, if you tap in the middle, we can view the record. That's what we want to do in this instance. To add works, select the Add Work Item button to display the work items form. This form will use a schedule of works and costings set up in the app. We've set up some work items for you, but you can easily edit and add your own in the app setup. So let's choose the relevant works item. As usual, you can enter additional notes if you wish. The work type, unit of measure and work unit cost has been filled in for you. It's up to you to change the quantity. You can see that the app has calculated the total cost. Furthermore, you can change the work status to scheduled, started, pending or completed. The app has automatically scheduled the work for the current year, but you can change that to a future year. Finally, we choose save. You can add other work items in a similar way. By default, the schedule of rates used in the standard app is a typical industry standard easy to understand structure. However, you must edit the costs and life cycles to suit your own needs. We also can offer the BCIS structure. This is especially useful if you are doing educational surveys. We can also set up your surveying app to use the SFG20 elemental structure, which is often preferred for hospitals and mobilisation surveys. There are other useful lists apart from the buildings list. For example, you can look at your reports in the items list where you can see a summarised list of building reports. When you choose a building report, you will see all the items in that building grouped into sections. Also, there's a works list. Tap into a building report in this list, and you'll see all the work for that building organised by building item, showing the work costs. There is also a locations list where you'll see all the items organised by location. Finally, there's an in-progress list, which shows you all the reports you still need to finish. We're getting near the end of the session now. Let me show you some standard features across all the list screens. These are accessed by the icons at the top right of the screen on the buildings, the items, the works, locations and the in-progress screens. The spyglass icon lets you narrow down your list by using a filter. You've also got the tick icon, where you can tick multiple records, and then either delete or create a report for the selected records. You click the cross on the left to unselect. The curly icon at the far right is the synchronization button. You use this if you want to force synchronization from your mobile devices to your desktop and vice versa. At the beginning of this session, I briefly showed you some common features of all the PS Cloud apps. I guess you'd like to see more details about these features. So I'm going to show you those now. The easiest way to get to the three bar menu is to tap the home buildings button at the bottom left. You will find these features when you tap the three bar menu at the top left. You'll see the common features running throughout all apps. So let's go into each one and explain in more detail. The jobs calendar lets you see your jobs by day, week, or month. If you click on a building address, you'll see the allocated time. You can then tap on it to view the building record. Let's go back to the calendar. You can always jump to today with the today button at the top. Now let's look at the maps feature. If you enter the postcode address, the maps feature will show maps of all the buildings in your database. And as usual, you can tap to view the building record. If you want to get directions on site, you can scroll and then tap the view map button. And this will launch Google Maps and allow you to get driving instructions by tapping the get driving directions car icon. So that's the maps feature. The progress feature is handy for managing your workflow. The by status screen on the left shows you the status of all your building reports. So if you tap pending, you'll see all the pending building reports. Tap the collapse arrow if you want to go back up a level. The middle screen shows your building records in date order with the latest date at the top. You can view a record if you tap the middle of the form. If you tap the pencil icon, you can edit the record directly. The screen to the right shows everything that still needs to be completed. With all these progress screens, you can add a new building record by tapping the plus icon. So that's the progress feature. Let's look at the users feature. As explained previously, you can have multiple types of users, such as an inspector only, an administrator who can configure the app, and a read-only client login. If you tap into a user, you can see details such as 
email, phone, address, signature, and so on. If you scroll down, you will see all the buildings they've inspected or quality checked. You can view the building record if you tap the middle of the form. If you tap the pencil icon, you can edit the report. So that's the user details. It's back up a level. Let's look at clients. You can see all your clients in this list. If you scroll down to a particular client, such as faster surveys, you can see all your clients' details when you tap into the record. You can communicate with them on site with these buttons here on the right. You can also navigate to their address with Google Maps. If you scroll further down, you'll see all the buildings and reports scheduled or completed for this client. So that's the client's feature. Let's go back to the menu. The most revolutionary part of all the PS Cloud apps is the app setup feature, where you can customize menus and report sections to suit your needs. You will see several configuration areas. We're going to cover each one. A side note here, you'll see each area on your mobile device as a separate tab. The app options lets you set some general aspects of your app. One thing you can do is turn features on or off. For example, you might want to turn off the clients feature because you don't have external clients. If we locate the show clients feature, we can set it to no. The change will be immediate. To collapse the show features section, we tap the minimize arrow icon. You can configure many other features, so explore these during your trial period. Let's now look at the report fields that appear on your front page. In the report fields section, you can set the information on your report, such as company name, address, logo, and so on. Apart from changing options, you can also edit or add to menus displayed in the app. For example, the Locations section shows you a list of pre-configured locations. If we want to add a new location, we can tap the large plus icon. Choose Location 1 from the item drop-down menu. Then tap on the description pull-down to reveal the existing locations. Now we can type in a new location to appear in the menu. Remember to tap Use next to the plus symbol. Then tap Save and go back a level. Just get in touch if you need further help with the App Options feature. Let's move on. In the middle of the screen, you have a place to modify the building item tick lists and menus. Let's do that now. You'll see the main item groups. Tap on a group to expand it. Then tap on a section to reveal the building items within that section. Let's tap in one of these. As you scroll down, you'll see Descriptions Defects and remedial work items. If you want to view these as a long list, click the View button. You can tap in the middle to view and edit them, or tap on the Add icon to add a new option. Let's add a new description option to the menu that appears when doing your assessment. Tap the Add icon. Type in our description option, such as asbestos. Tap Save and return to the previous screen. And then back to the App Setup screen. That's the App Design feature. Don't be afraid of experimenting during your low-cost trial. We're always on hand to give you help and support. We can also control the report design to customize the PDF report to your needs. Let's expand the report design area first. Tap into the disclaimer section and we see the phrases that will appear in that section of the report. Tap on the edit pencil icon to edit a phrase and make any changes you want. You can also hide a phrase from appearing in the report by toggling the show option from Y to N. You can also hide whole sections from the report. For example, if you wanted to hide the building info section from a client report, tap into the layout item and toggle the show option to end. That's the very versatile report design feature. Now let's look at how help and support works. The help and support screen contains handy little tips about using the app organized into sections. You can expand each section to reveal more details. For example, if I tap on training videos, you can read some tips and access relevant links. That's the straightforward help feature. Now let's look at tables and exporting your data to spreadsheet files. Note that this tables feature will only appear when using a desktop computer. You'll see the main data tables in the app, such as buildings, items and works, and possibly other tables depending on how your app is configured. Let's expand the building table and you will see a spreadsheet view of the data. You can filter this view using the spyglass icon to focus on part of the table rather than the whole. At the bottom, you can see icons for importing and exporting your data. Tables are an advanced feature, so don't hesitate to contact us if you want to know more. Now, remember to get your low-cost trial if you're not already a Pocket Survey user, where you'll get your first month's subscription at a vastly reduced price. Remember, there's no obligation to carry on your subscription after the trial month, and you've got access to the full software, including free training and support. If you don't like the software after that, that's no problem. Just let us know and we won't bill you, and you can continue your search for a digital solution for your planned maintenance surveys. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to learn more about any of our PS Cloud apps, 
please visit our website pocketsurvey.com where you'll see lots of information about all our building and inspection software. So that's the PS Cloud Plant Maintenance Software in a nutshell. I hope you enjoyed the training session. Bye for now and see you soon.